Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High School. And like most other teachers, she tries to stay on the best of terms with her principal, Mr. Osgood Conklin. This isn't always easy. You see, Mr. Conklin has high blood pressure, and it's wise to take him with a grain of salt. Of course, it's wiser not to take him at all. (laughs) Anyway, on Thursday, he gave me a little honorary assignment to take care of on my own time, which consisted of a report he had to submit to the school board. I was to rephrase, punctuate, and proofread the 25 pages by morning. And sure enough, I got it all done by morning. (laughs) In fact, when Mrs. Davis, my landlady, awakened me, I had been sleeping like a baby for over 20 minutes. You seem all upset, dear. What's the trouble? Nightmare? No, daymare. I was up all night with some extra work Mr. Conklin gave me. Oh, well, I guess you can use the extra money that goes with it. Money? What money? Surely there must be some compensation for working away from the school. Oh, there is, Mrs. Davis. The satisfaction of a job well done, the thrill of helping my colleagues in their time of need, and the gratification that comes with the knowledge that I've assisted my superior officer on the battlefield of life. (laughs) And you know something else, Mrs. Davis. What, Connie? The next time I work at home, it'll cost him a fin. (laughs) Well, remember this, dear Money won't buy back your health and good looks once they've gone If I were you, I'd flatly refuse to do any extra work at all Oh, but I can't do that Mr. Conklin's my principal That doesn't give him the license to make a beast of burden out of you Why, for two cents, I'd advise you to quit And if I had two cents, I'd take your advice (laughs) No, Mrs. Davis, even a beast of burden has to earn oat money Well, hurry with your shower, Connie I've got a nice breakfast all planned for you Oh, I won't have time for breakfast today, Mrs. Davis Walter Denton's taking me to school in his car So I can get this report to Mr. Conklin What's the matter with your car, Connie? I had a little trouble with the steering wheel What kind of trouble? It came off (laughs) It's nice of you to give me this lift today, Walter And I'd like to compliment you on your promptness, too. You were right on time. Oh, punctuality's a mania with me, Miss Brooks. Besides, if I wasn't on time, you'd let some other kid pick you up. Like I always say, the early bird catches the worm. (laughs) Well, like I always say to the other worms, let's get some men and go fishing. (laughs) Confidentially, Miss Brooks, you look like you could use a little help. You seem bushed. Frankly, I think you're work-happy, Miss Brooks. Work-happy? Yeah. What did you do last night after you got home from school? I worked on a report for Mr. Conklin. Aha! I knew it. Mr. Conklin shouldn't give you extra things to do. Why don't you tell him about it, Walter? I'm not kidding, Miss Brooks. If you let him, Mr. Conklin will make a beast of burden out of you. You gotta put your foot down. I may put all four of them down. (laughs) But I've been reading in the papers that there's quite a shortage of good teachers. You don't have to tow cow to anybody. I don't have to what, Walter? Tau cow. It's Chinese slang for polishing the apple. <laughs> well, Walter, I don't tau cow to Mr. Conklin. It's just that he's my prin- principal. And Excuse I... me, Miss Brooks, but he's only your principal at school. After hours, he's just. Well, before I quote what I'm going to quote, I'd like to make a prior statement. Proceed. Well, any remark I make now is merely something I overheard in my daily contact with other members of the student body and does not necessarily reflect the opinion of the repeating eavesdropper. Well, repeat away, eavesdropper. (laughs) I've heard sundry other pupils refer to Mr. Conklin as... Like I said, Miss Brooks, this isn't necessarily my opinion of him. You've made that very clear, Walter. Good. Well, some of the kids have spoken of Mr. Conklin as... After all, I go with his daughter, Harriet, you know (laughs) Yes, I know It might not be the right thing to do To talk about my father-in-law Walter, you're not married yet Well, that's right, too Well, I've heard him called it Gee, I wouldn't want Harriet to know about this My lips are sealed, Walter Now go on Okay Now, Mr. Conklin, in the eyes of some of the undergraduates at this high school Is nothing but a... Gosh, if I was Harriet's father and he was going to marry Harriet, I wouldn't want him to go repeating things about me. Then again, he'd probably be the first one to do it. 
Sure he would. So I'll tell. Tell, tell. <laughs> a kid in the cafeteria called Mr. Conklin a big inflated bag of ego. There, I said it. <laughs> Give that boy a new Nash and a pair of pajamas to drive it in. <laughs> You won't ever mention my mentioning this, will you, Miss Brooks? Oh, of course not, Walter. I wouldn't even want anyone to hear me thinking it. Mr. Conklin may be rather a disciplinarian, but he does have quite a job on his hands, too. Running a high school these days is difficult work. Now, just between you and me, Walter... Yes? How would you go about deflating a big bag of ego? Well, the first thing I'd do is not let him think I was afraid of my job. I'd walk in with whatever work I'd done for him last night, throw it on his desk and say, there you are, that's the last work I do outside of my regular school duties. Take it or leave it, buster. <laughs> well, that sounds like sterling advice, Walter, but there's just one more thing I'd like to ask you. What's that, Miss Brooks? If buster decides to leave it... Yeah? Where's the nearest local of the Beasts of Burden Union? <laughs> Now then, Harriet, I want the furniture in this office to be absolutely glistening. But, Daddy, it's as neat as a pin now. Harriet Conklin, when your father and principal asks you to polish something, grab a dust rag, girl. <laughs> but why, Daddy? Because Mr. Jason Brill, the principal of Clay City High School, is paying me a visit. You know how sarcastic and critical he can be. But why is he coming to Madison? Well, I'm not positive, Harriet, but I think the old pirate is here to raid one of my teachers. It's a deplorable practice, but he stole a Spanish teacher right from under the nose of Colton's principal. But, Daddy, didn't you get our new math teacher, Mr. Fane, away from Clay City? Uh, that, Harriet, is just a rumor. <laughs> Mr. Fane came to Madison of his own free will. You mean he joined our faculty before you gave him your own study at home to sleep in and promised him your car whenever he wanted it and told him about having all his meals with us free of charge and two movies a week thrown in? <clears throat> Consider the subject closed Now if that Brill thinks he can sneak in here Like a thief in the night yeah, I beg rob... your pardon Why, it's... it's... It just call me Kettle I'm the Kettle that was being called black By that pot over there <laughs> Now see here, Brill I won't... Oh, excuse me That will be all, Harriet Yes, Daddy Goodbye, Mr. Brill hey, Goodbye, Harriet Poor girl What do you mean, poor girl? If you've come here to get my goat, Jason oh, Brill, I'm... Oh, on the contrary, Osgood. It's not a goat I'm after. It's an English teacher I've got my eye on. An English teacher? This is war, Osgood. <laughs> but remember, you crossed my frontier first. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about Mr. Fane, a good, if flighty, math teacher. Okay, you've got Fane. But I'm going to get the best English teacher at Madison, Miss Constance Brooks. Miss Brooks? But what made you pick her out? I'm attracted to her syntax. <laughs> Very interesting, Brill, but an altogether impossible task. Why should Miss Brooks want to work for any other principal when she's used to the benevolent, tender, warm-hearted guidance of a person like myself? That's one of the things I'm depending on. <laughs> Another one is a secret weapon, Osgood. You'll find out all about it when it's too late. Secret weapon? What secret weapon? It's a secret, Osgood. <laughs> but believe me, it's going to work. Jason, you're being absolutely childish. There isn't the remotest possibility of Miss Brooks making any such ridiculous change as you suggest. There isn't, Dad. No, there isn't. Hey, look, Osgood, I don't want to be an old I told you so, but that's just what they said right before Jack Benny switched to CBS. <laughs> There you are, Mr. Conklin. That's the last work I do outside of my regular duties. Miss Brooks. That's it. Take it or leave it, Bitbuster. I mean, sir. <laughs> They've gotten to her. Um, come here, Miss Brooks. Sit down by my desk, if you please. What? Oh, but I've got a class soon, Mr. Uh, Conklin. That can wait. You've been working too hard lately, Miss Brooks. I have? That is sure I have. I don't like it, you hear? I don't like it one bit. You don't? We here at Madison don't want our teachers to overwork. After all, you're an educator, a person of intellect and perception, not a... a... Beast of burden? Exactly. <laughs> Look about you, Miss Brooks. 
the walls of this office. That picture hanging there of Madison's first principal, Yoda Critch. He certainly was. There's more to a school than the people in it. There's tradition, a tradition of loyalty and industry, good fellowship and cooperation, but mostly loyalty. Why, when I think of our school song, it brings a lump to my throat. Oh, Madison, thou Madison, I love the air, thou, uh, thou... Madison? Uh, thou Madison. <laughs> uh, Miss Brooks, come with me to the window. These hallowed walls, this lovely ivy-covered exterior, do you know the significance of this venerable and beloved ivy, Miss Brooks? Why, no, I don't, Mr. Conklin. Uh, here, I'll raise the window. <laughs> here, let me help you. <laughs> it's caught in that scummy ivy. <laughs> here. Here. Well, there we are. Now look, Miss Brooks, look at this beautiful campus, as far as the eye can see, green grass. Now, there's one thing I want you to do before you do anything else. No. What? No, I won't do it. Won't do what? I absolutely refuse to mow that lawn. <laughs> Steve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. The makers of Palm Olive Soap are giving away $100,000 in prizes. First prize, $49,000, plus over 4,900 other cash prizes in the big 49 Gold Rush Contest. Hundreds will strike it rich in this exciting Gold Rush Contest. One of them may be you. It's easy to enter. Just finish this sentence in 25 additional words or less. I like palm olive soap because... That's all. Just 25 words or less to finish the sentence, I like palm olive soap because... Then mail your entry right away along with a palm olive soap wrapper. Try for your share of that $100,000 in prizes right now. Your chance of winning $49,000 is as good as anyone's. Get entry blank with complete rules from your dealer or write your completed sentence on plain paper. Include your name and address and dealer's name and address. Mail with one palm olive soap wrapper for each entry to Gold Rush Contest, Box 49, New York 8, New York. You better write that down. Gold Rush Contest, Box 49, New York 8, New York. Enter as often as you like, including one wrapper with each entry. But hurry, the contest closes a week from next Saturday. Mail your entry right away. Get palm olive soap right away to help win a lovelier complexion and try for your share of the $100,000 in cash prizes. Well, Mr. Conklin not only canceled all extracurricular work for me, but as we stood by the window looking across the campus, he actually bent over backwards to be courteous and sweet. Of course, he didn't bend over quite far enough. But it was a surprise to see him acting so human. <laughs> Although I couldn't understand the reason for this unaccustomed solicitude, I didn't let it spoil my appetite. When lunch period arrived, I was in the school cafeteria with our bashful biologist, Mr. Philip Boynton. Here we are. You sit right down, Miss Brooks. Oh, thanks. Have you got everything? Modesty forbids a direct answer. <laughs> oh, you mean on my tray. <laughs> set, Mr. Boynton. Oh, good. How do you like what they're serving in the cafeteria these days, Miss Brooks? Well, it'll never replace food, but it's improving. <laughs> it isn't what you eat in the place that's important anyway. It's with whom. What's with whom? With whom you eat with whom. <laughs> or as I once heard another English teacher say, what's with you? Oh, you're teasing me again, Miss Brooks, but I'm getting kind of used to it. I catch on much faster now than I used to, don't you think? Oh, yes, you're really gone, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Not till I finish my meatballs. Uh, that's, that's another one of those colloquial expressions, isn't it? Gone. Uh, I wonder what the derivation actually is. How a simple expression like the past tense of go could assume the connotation with which it's currently associated seems totally incomprehensible at first glance. Eat your meatballs, Mr. Boynton, before they get warm again. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks.
Brooks, Mr. Boynton. Well, it's Harriet Conklin. Hello, Harriet. Daddy wants to see you in his office right away, Mr. Boynton, if you don't mind. And if he does mind? Oh, please, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin wouldn't summon me during my lunch period unless it was something important. I think it is. Daddy sounded very urgent. Maybe some of that ivy crawled into his office. <laughs> you haven't forgotten our date this afternoon, Mr. Boynton. Oh, no, no. I'll call for you after school and take you to the zoo. See you at three, Miss Brooks. All right, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton isn't always as romantic as you'd like him to be, is he, Miss Brooks? No, Harriet, not always. Or ever, for that matter. <laughs> well, maybe it's just as well. You know how Daddy feels about faculty members fraternizing. Not that I think Daddy's right. Sometimes Daddy can be pretty harsh. But then, if Daddy wasn't Daddy, what would he be? Mammy. <laughs> I don't know, Harriet. I'm going up to the steam table and get some lunch, Miss Brooks. Can I bring you anything? No, thanks. Run along, Harriet. Okay, Miss Brooks. <sighs> Poor Miss Brooks. She chases after Mr. Boynton just like Walter Denton runs after me. Oh, I beg your pardon? Why, it's Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Harriet. Uh, this is Mr. Hastings. Harvey, this is Osgood Conklin's daughter, Harriet. How do you do, my dear? It's always a pleasure to meet a member of Madison's undergraduate body. Especially such a charming and lovely one as yourself. Why, thank you, Mr. Hastings. Golly! <laughs> uh, Mr. Hastings and I were just talking, Harriet. We'll excuse you if you want to get to the steam table. Huh? Oh, yes, Mr. Brill. Will I see you again, Mr. Hastings? No, I would consider that a very fortuitous circumstance indeed, Harriet. You would? Mm -hmm. You'd better not walk backwards, Harriet, or you'll... <laughs> she did. <laughs> Hastings, it's marvelous. You've got something that makes women drop whatever they're doing and concentrate on you. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Brill. I just try to be pleasant to everyone. Uh-huh. Well, you keep it up. We'll have Connie Brooks in our English department in no time. Yeah, now, look, this is a good chance for you to meet her. She's seated at that table over by the wall, and she's alone. Uh, don't tell her too much right now, but make an appointment for tea. Then we'll really go to work on her. Well, if you say so, Mr. Brill, but it does seem like a kind of dirty trick with teachers so hard to get nowadays. I think... Secret weapons don't think. They act. Now, there's Miss Brooks Hastings. Sick her. <laughs> yes, sir. And when I bring her back and place her at your feet, I expect a whole case of strong heart. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Brooks, but may I introduce myself? What? Yes, I suppose. Well, <laughs> I'm Constance Brooks. Yes, I know. My name is Hastings, Harvey Hastings. Are these chairs occupied? Just the one I'm sitting in. <laughs> oh, I mean, help yourself, please. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to be in town very long, Miss Brooks, and... I'll have to move rapidly, so may I take you home after school? That's a little too rapidly. <laughs> Just who are you, Mr. Hastings? Well, I'm a, I'm a sort of a friend of a friend of Mr. Conklin's. He has? <laughs> I dropped over today with Mr. Brill. Oh, the principal of Clay City High. What are you doing here, slumming? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that must be the famous Brooks wit I've heard so much about. <laughs> You can stop now, I have. <laughs> Seriously, Miss Brooks, I think that your undergraduate body is wonderful. Mr. Hastings. <laughs> no, 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 the kids, the kids. Oh, the kids. Great bunch, your faculty's nice too. Yes, I still have them all. Oh, the, <laughs> the teachers. Miss Brooks, there's, there's one thing I, I just can't understand. How does a youthful, intelligent, lovely-looking person like yourself happen to be lunching alone? I beg your pardon? Didn't you hear what I said, Miss Brooks? You lost me after youthful. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I, I, I just can't figure it out. All by yourself in this big cafeteria. Oh, a thing like this could never happen at Clay City. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hastings. <laughs> Miss Brooks, uh, I'm writing a book on the teaching of English in our high schools, and I'd certainly like to include an interview with Madison's outstanding authority on the subject. Oh, an interview. Hmm. Well, I did have a date this afternoon, but... Shall we say tea for two at four? 
Well, I guess so, but there's something I can't help thinking. Oh, what's that, Miss Brooks? T for two at four will mean zoo for one at three. <laughs> And that's why I've summoned you to my office, Mr. Boynton. Jason Brill and his, his secret weapon must be stopped. You've got to make Miss Brooks stay on at Madison. But why me, Mr. Conklin? You, you know how timid I am. Well, you've got to get over it, boy. You like Miss Brooks, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. But what about your stand on fraternization? I've reversed it as of now. <laughs> Look, Boynton, all you have to do is act the way you really feel. Or better yet, the way you've seen other people act. <laughs> What do you mean, Mr. Mr. Conklin? Well, you've seen leading men on the screen, haven't you? Humphrey Bogart in Knock on Any Door, Errol Flynn in, in Don Juan. No, sir, I haven't seen those. Oh, well, what's the last movie you did see? The last movie I saw was called, uh, I believe it was called Arrowsmith. <laughs> I don't go to movies much, Mr. Conklin. You see, I'm more of a radio fan. I listen to those mystery programs a lot. Mystery programs, eh? Well, that's just as good. According to my wife and daughter, those private detective fellows are as attractive as any of the movie stars. Now, why don't you act like one of them when Miss Brooks comes around? Me? Act like a private eye? Certainly. From what I hear, most of them merely sit behind a desk until some beautiful girl comes in. Then they open the drawer, take a big drink, and then they say, Come on, babe, we're going on a caper. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> Well, I won't take no for an answer, Boynton. You've got to do it. Well, Mr. Conklin, It's you... for Madison, boy. Tell me that you'll try, Boynton. That's all I ask. <laughs> all right, Mr. Conklin. I'll try. Come in. Oh, it's me, Mr. Boynton. I'm glad I caught you before you left school for the day. I won't be able to go to the zoo with you this afternoon. Mr. Boynton, did you hear what I said? What are you doing at that desk? <laughs> Park the frame, baby. <laughs> what? Stash it. Right there. Now, what's the caper, sweetheart? The caper? Now, look, I know the opposition's trying to put the heist on certain persons, but we've got a few angles, too. Angles? They can't get away with it, see? Now, we've got them covered like a bubble dancer in Boston, see? <laughs> and that comes right from Mr. Big, see? Thank you, Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> you, you've got to stay here, Miss Brooks. You can't leave Madison. I don't know what their secret weapon is, but... Just a minute. That... Who are we now, Buck Rogers? <laughs> no, 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 it's me, Mr. Poynton. Uh, that was just distilled water I drank. Distilled water? I don't know what Mr. Brill's planning, but don't you... Uh, then perhaps I'd better explain it myself. You'll excuse us, I know. The door was open. I believe you've met Mr. Hastings, Miss Brooks. Oh, yes, I have. Uh, this is Mr. Boynton, Mr. Hastings. How do you do? Uh, hello. Uh, we've got to get back to Clay City a little earlier than I'd planned, Miss Brooks, so I'm afraid your interview will have to be postponed. However, I'm sure that we can take up... Just where we left off, and we are all together in Clay City, huh? Clay City? Yes. As you know, a good teacher is always in demand, Miss Brooks. Oh, uh, there, Brill, you teacher snatcher. Uh, what has he told you, Miss Brooks? Don't listen to him. Don't listen to any anybody. Well, that isn't hard. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> what is all this, anyway? Well, Mr. Hastings here is head of the English department at Clay City, Miss Brooks. Aha! Uh -huh. Then he's your secret weapon, huh? Well, if you want to put it that way, actually, I'm a very simple man. Yes, you are, in a jet-propelled sort of way. <laughs> now, see here, Bill. I won't have... You can't do it. I'll have you... Oh, stop puffing, Osgood. You've come to a station. <laughs> what do you say, Miss Brooks? Would you like to transfer to Clay City? Transfer? Well, come to think of it, I have been overworking lately. I might consider a transfer at that. Oh, you can't, Miss Brooks. Oh, why can't she? Have you got some extra chores she can do without pay? How about it, Mr. Conklin? Any more extra work? No, Miss Brooks, none at all. It's very pleasant at Clay City, Miss Brooks. Say you'll come. Say you won't. Uh, which is it, Miss Brooks? Well, it's quite a problem. But now I'd like to ask a question, Mr. Brill. If I were a biology teacher, would you want me to come to Clay City? A biology teacher? Well, frankly, no. There's no opening for a biology teacher. That's all I wanted to know. Good day, gentlemen. I'm remaining at Madison. Well, we tried. Come on, Hastings. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Ah, good for you, Miss Brooks. Mm. Old Madison, 
The Madison. As old as Thomas Addison. <laughs> oh, hallowed halls. Oh, basketball. How short the day. How short the pay. <laughs> when we've gray hair at Madison. City. <laughs> Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, Manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin finally left us all alone in Mr. Boynton's laboratory. Oh, gosh, Miss Brooks, you you sure had me worried. Were you really afraid I'd leave, Mr. Boynton? Oh, sure, I couldn't even talk. I was so nervous. You didn't get much of a chance. But now that we're alone, Mr. Boynton, is there anything else you want to say to me? Yes, Miss Brooks, there there is. What? If we don't hurry, we'll be late for the zoo. (laughs) Where are you going, Miss Brooks? What are you doing at my desk? Park the frame, baby. You're in for the caper of your life. (laughs) Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Pomelix Hope, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler. Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Gerald Moore, and Frank Nelson. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palmolive way to shave described on the tube, and no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System.